the cloud. Okay. All right. Thanks, Billy. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining us. We've got a nice cr crowd here this after this evening, so we really appreciate it. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And can everybody see my screen? Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so for those of you that attended the leadership trainings um, back in um, the spring, um, this is somewhat the same presentation, but it doesn't always hear to, hurt to hear it twice. And for those that you weren't there, uh, you know, you'll get to see it for the first time. So one of the things that the Zone 33 District Public Image Team put together is a playbook um, for the public image teams as well as the DG chains. Um, for those that attended the uh, leadership trainings, uh, you got a copy of this. If you weren't there and you would like to get a copy, uh, the link to access that through the Zone 33 Public Image Team Toolbox is on the screen, or you can you can click on the QR code. You can scan the QR code, um, and if you can't access it by either one of those, please get a hold of one of us on the team, and we'll be happy to send it to you. So tonight we're going to talk about building your team and how you can support your district. So one of the first things that you need to be doing is, is as district public image chairs is to learn your role. And training is knowledge is power. And by pr participating in this masterclass, um, that's what we're hoping to do is, is to give you some training. The best resources for a lot of the training is to go to the learning center in my rotary. And there you will see a, a link for the public image. There are eight courses in this link. And we suggest that you as district public image chairs, as well as anybody else that's interested in learning more about public image, take the courses. They're very, very short. Uh, you don't need to complete them all in one setting. It'll save your work of what you've done. And you can always go back and complete them at a later date. This is a list of those trainings, um, but more important, what we're looking for is the Club Public Image Committee basics. And we ask that you, you also share this information with your club public image chairs. Another place where you can find a lot of resources is on the Rotary Zone 33 public image page. Um, we have templates and resources. Um, we have the master classes and the office hours. And then there's also a tab for special programs. So after you have completed your courses and you've learned what your role is, your next objective should be is building your team. And when you're building your team, you should be looking for people within your district um, who have expertise and can help you with public relations, with the website and technology, with photography, social media, and the newsletter. While not all districts have the advantage of, being, of having people that have all of these talents or are willing to step up, um, it, it, these are the valuable tools that you and your team um, need to assess and get a hold of so that you can become an effective public image team. Oops. The next thing that you need to be looking to do, oh, dog on it. Is to be start working with your team. You need to meet with your team and to establish the goal, your roles. And in addition to the learning center and the Zone 33 public website, you need to be looking at the brand center. Um, I'm not sure if, how many of you have been into the brand center recently, but earlier this spring, they did a total revamp of the brand center. 
And the tools in there are so much easier to access and use. Another valuable tool is the Voice and Visuals Identity Guide. This gives you a lot of templates, gives you the proper fonts, the proper color codes, and the proper use of branding. After you've worked with your team, you now need to be developing your goals. Rotary International um, recommends that the goals that public image should be using is, is to elevate Rotary's global profile as people of influence, people of purpose, and people of action at at least four of your communications. You need to be telling the stories of effective club, district, and international programs and projects, particularly in Rotary's areas of focus to at least four target audiences, and ensure that 50% of your club public image chairs complete the learning plan in the learning center and have at least two district Rotary brand training sessions. The Zone 33 team has put together a list of goals and we're gonna talk about this a little bit later. Is we encourage you to create a team of at least three members. We ask that you attend five of the public image master classes and at least one of the office hours that you attend the Zone 33 leadership training, which that's already occurred. So for those of you that have done that, thank you. And we ask that you take the eight public image public relations courses located in the Learning Center. We also encourage your public image chairs to take the six public image and public relations courses located in the Learning Center. Sure, the next thing you need to be looking at is, is to supporting the district's vision. The district, district's vision should be coming from the district governor, your public image team, the membership team, the foundation team, and taking a look at your district strategic plan. The areas that you should be focusing on should be membership, new club development, foundation, diversity, equity, and inclusion, the strengthening of clubs, community service, developing leaders, and international service. The suggestion here is, is that what you should be doing is, is asking your district governor if you could set up a meeting with him as well as your membership, your district membership chair and your district foundation chair and see how you as a public image team can help them towards these goals um, that they have within the district. Rotary's vision statement is together we see a world where people unite and take action to create lasting change across the globe in our communities and in ourselves. The four priorities of that are to increase our impact, Public image and public relations can go a long way to increasing the impact in the projects and the services that we provide. We need to ex be expanding our reach. This goes towards our diversity, equity, and inclusion. We need to be remembering that strength lies in differences, not in similarities. We need to be working to help clubs and members to enhance their participant engagement. And we need to be increasing our ability to adapt. A lot of times this can be the hardest thing to, to get done, but with a lot of work and persistence, I think we can make definite changes. Your next duties and goals should be is this to be supporting the clubs. We request it and ask that you be contacting your clubs and the uh, public image chairs to uh, introduce yourself and your team and suggest that they have at least two people on their public image team. When we say two people, oftentimes what we refer to here is, is that there should be one person that should be taking care of their website and another person be taking care of their Facebook. 
or any other social media platform that they may be using. You need to give them the links for the Learning Center, the Brand Center, and the Zone 33 public image website and encourage them to use those and to learn what the content is and, and the resources that are available there. Invite them to participate in these Zone 33 uh, public image masterclasses and office hours. And we suggest and ask that you schedule at least two district training sessions. During the year, we suggest that you be monitoring your clubs for proper branding. This sometimes can become very uh, sticky. Um, we had one member of our team who actually went to their club and suggested that they were using the wrong branding. And they were kind of suggested that they should be minding their own business. Um, but if we are, we all need to be using the same branding. We need to be sending the same message. You need to be working with your clubs to create public image and public relations campaigns. Offer to be a program at club meetings. Oftentimes clubs are looking for outside um, speakers to come into their meetings. So you or one of your team um, offer and suggest that you pr present a program at one of their meetings. You need to encourage club membership, foundation and public image chairs to be working as a team. Um, we've all too, oft, too often heard that the membership foundation and public image should not be as independent silos, but they should be working together. But oftentimes we find that not only on the club level, but on the district level and even on the zone level, this doesn't always occur. So here again, it's with persistence that we can get this done. We also ask that you be asking your clubs to post their community service projects on the Rotary Showcase. And this can be accessed in My Rotary. And then what we are asking is, is that once they have posted those, you let us as a team know that they are there because we would like to showcase those projects in our monthly newsletters. This is an example of a project that was posted back in March in the Rotary Showcase. As a public image team, we always have the help wanted sign out. We should be encouraging every single member of our clubs in our districts to be a part of the public image team. We all know that one of our responsibilities in Rotary is, is that we're all to be serving on the membership committees and we're all to be inviting new people to be coming into our clubs. But we should also be encouraging and letting our members know that they should be a part of our public image teams. Everybody has a cell phone. Everybody's out doing things at, at community service projects. Encourage them to be taking pictures so that they can be posted on district websites, club websites, on social media pages, as well as sharing them with us on the Zone 33 public image team. So who in your club is the public image chair? Is it the individual that has the red arrow above his head? Or is it another member of the public image team? No, it's everybody that's in this room should be felt to be as part of the public image team. And as you're doing your work with your clubs and with your district, remember that we are not the Rotary police, but we are the Rotary coaches. We are there to help them and encourage them to use the proper branding, as well as to help them with anything that they need as well as in the form of public image or anything related to public relations. So again, the six steps that you and your public image team should be looking at is, is to learning your roles, building your team, training, establishing your goals, working with your other district and club officers on the vision and then support. So this is your public image team, which was introduced earlier. Unfortunately, Hannah isn't able to be with us this evening.
But if you have any questions or if there's anything that we can do to assist, please don't hesitate to reach out to one of us. We're always more than willing to offer assistance to come to any district or club functions and do presentations. So thank you for joining us. And I will, and now Billy, what we'll do is we'll share our ideas for the awards. Do you have that ready? I do. I am going to share screen and see if I can. There it is. Hey, Billy, one quick um, thing just for I think would be helpful. So who here yes. by a raise of hands um, is a district representative? So you're a district DG line or PI chair or something at the district. OK. And how many of you are at, serving at the club level? So like you're your club public image chair. Okay, perfect. Oh, we have a great mix tonight. Okay, great. Billy, I just wanted to make sure we knew that before we started, because this will sure. mainly be, I think, for district. Um, we have a pretty good mix tonight of uh, club and district reps. And we'll send this out in a message a little bit later. One of the things that we left off under the all-stars, there's going to be two categories. Uh, Ken, can you tell me what the first one was that we just decided and, and I left out? Yeah, it's to encourage clubs to do the Rotary Cl Club health check. And can you tell us what the club health check is? Yeah, it's a tool that's accessible uh, in my Rotary. Um, and it's a survey that can be given out to clubs so that you can assess the um, the members uh, opinions of what's going on within the club and how you as a club can be uh, can improve. Um, um, this goes towards the uh, membership engagement or membership participation, uh, finding what uh, what the club wants to do as opposed to what the club leaders want to do. Well, and we also want, as part of this, look at on the club level, and then you can help on the district level, look at everything that you put out there and make sure you're using the correct logo. And now is the time to get rid of those <clears throat> those outdated highway signs. I will share ours at a later date, but we put our sign up in front of town hall and <clears throat> it has the new logo in it. So uh, it's time to put the new logos everywhere you are. So check out your stationery. Of course, nobody does stationery anymore because you've got a Word doc. So if you're using stationery, you might save yourself some money, but look on your uh, your website and your Facebook page and anything that you're sending to the public, make sure that you've got the correct logo. And while we're talking about this, um, Marshall said this in last night's presentation to Zone 34, um, please don't get creative with the logo. Use your creativity for your projects and things like that. But in particular, this week's, this year's theme, don't change the colors. Don't, don't add an extra arc. Make sure that you leave it just as it is. Um, and while we're at it, the Imagine Rotary is our theme logo. It is for internal use. So I shouldn't see it out on Facebook. I should see it in your internal, on your web page, on your um, bulletins and things like that. That's where it's appropriate. It's for internal use, not for external use. So let's keep that in mind. So each year at Zone, we have an awards for the districts. And while some of you went, may not be there to accept, your governors can accept for you and bring it back to the club or the district. So to be an all-star, we want you to encourage, encourage clubs to do a club health check and to attend the Zone 33 leadership training, which has already passed, complete the eight public image relation courses in Learning Center and attend five master classes and one office hour. And I can see who has um, attended, who has gone in the Learning Center. They send me a report. But the master classes, I'm going to go by who's registered. And I'm hoping that one of my team knows how to look and see who was a participant in this um, class. But to be an, an MVP or an MVDPIC, 
uh, attend the leadership training, which is already passed in April, complete the eight public image or the public relations courses in the learning center, the five master classes in one office hour, create a team of at least three members and put them in DAC DB and have at least one club post a community service on Rotary Club Showcase. So, and hopefully you're gonna do more than that, but it will take us a while to get used to doing Rotary Showcase. There are people uh, in other countries that do this very well, but we have not done that very well in Zone 33. I think Dawn has begun to do it in her group in 7730. So we'll watch for that. Ashley, do you have a moment to share with us your um, grant public relations template? Uh, sure, and it's probably easier to send around, but I think, you know, today, one of the things as Ken was talking about that's important to remember is there are a lot of different things you can do at your club or your district level to make sure you're ready for your year, right? And so one of those things that you may decide is an opportunity in your district, this is mainly for district public image chairs right now, is to start collaborating with your membership and your foundation teams a little more collaboratively. So um, a few years ago, I actually presented something to my foundation team and said, hey, I can't market and showcase to the community what our grants are doing um, because I don't know what they are and we're not really asking for them to send us back that information. We need basic information about impact. We need photos. Um, so I created a short list of questions that's like only three or four questions that I provided to my foundation chair um, in my district and asked them to incorporate that into their final reporting requirements for the uh, district grants that they were doing. So I don't know how many of you have reviewed if you're the district PI chair or if you're in the DG line, you've ever reviewed what your foundation committee is asking for back, but it's really important to understand we're giving all this money out. Um, you know, the least we can ask our clubs to do is to send us back information so we know what was going on. Um, and I happen to be a nonprofit person. I work in nonprofits for my day job and I have to send so much information back to every person that gives me money, right? All my grant funders ask for so much information. We sometimes don't ask for anything, and if we do, it's very focused on what the foundation committee is thinking about. It's our job as public image chairs to make sure that we're telling them, hey, if you give us this information, we can help you showcase that story. Um, so I will make sure that gets out to everyone. It's just a one pager with, um, like I said, three or four questions. And I would just you know, check in with your foundation chair and say, hey, what does our reporting look like for district grants? Um, and you can use these questions as a guide to then help with your storytelling about the district grants that you're doing, not only at the club level, but also at the district level. So that's just one idea we wanted to share tonight that sometimes can be, um, sometimes can be forgotten. Okay, there is a question. May, from I, may I ask a question, Britt, from Delray Beach Rotary Club? Yes. I, I did put it in the chat, but- um, no, I was just gonna read it, so go ahead. Uh, but. You know, a lot of our, like I have sent to newsprint media, we have, they don't seem to be interested in our international projects. They want to hear about things in our own backyard, which is not always current. We do them quarterly. So how do I get around that? And how do I, I'd like some advice. It's a good question. Ashley, so did you want to feel that since you were talking about district grants uh certainly so can you remind me where you're located at delray beach delray beach okay um so i feel a little bit of your pain because um my district is surrounded in the baltimore dc area so sometimes i really struggle getting anything picked up by our market because there's just so much going on that it's kind of hard for Rotary clubs to get airtime. <laughs> um, and so I get that sometimes you have to be a little bit creative. Um, but obviously, if certain platforms aren't working with you, then I would just use your other platforms that may be working better for you. So again, social media, I think for our international work is a really great platform for that. Um, I also think that it's important to understand how much of your community and your Rotarians are coming to Rotary because of your community projects or your international projects. Um, every club is different in that with how how much people are interested in that, which might also lead to you getting some information out into the community. So if you have one or two platforms or 
you know, contacts in the media that don't want to do that, I just encourage you to use your other platforms because, again, sometimes you're not going to be able to break into that. I think well, also, I have a if spreadsheet, excuse me, I have a spreadsheet in my club. I have to respect the membership of my club and they want to see it in the local newspaper. And I've reached out to them and, you know, I can get 199 characters. I can send in shots, but, you know, we just did a, a great job with an international project, but they don't want to pick it up uh, because it's not in their own backyard. Uh, you know, so leveraging social media platforms via Hootsuite or whatever else, it, it, it doesn't matter, you know, but I have to please my membership as well as, you know, be a good public image chair. So I, I just, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I would recommend really, I mean, not pushing back on your club members, but it's just the reality. I mean, you can't force a media outlet to pick up your stuff, um, especially if there's other things that are competing with it. I think one, you can try to work on the relationships with your media partners. Um, I know when I worked, I worked for a mayor here in my city, and I worked really hard to create those relationships to get some things into the press that they never would have really put in there. So it's about relationship building. But I also think that um, there's other ways to leverage print media isn't dead, but print media doesn't work well for everything. So I think looking at your partners, the cool thing about social media is if you have international partners, it's really easy for you guys to go together and create something that might be a little more exciting and might create more momentum on social media than it would in the newspaper. So I know some people are really committed to making sure they see their face in print or their things in print. But at the end of the day, the media places are they're running their own business. So I feel like if you're getting that pushback from the media outlet, you can either try to work on the relationship and see if that helps. But if it doesn't, just be honest with your club that you need to use or your district, you need to use different platforms. Um, I never just send one thing to one place. I'm always using four or five different platforms because everyone watches and learns things differently. And if you're only sending it to your paper, you're going to be missing out on people that are really paying attention to social media and whatnot. So I get the point, I get the struggle. Um, I think it's important just to be creative with your material. Um, try your best to get it on as many things as you can, but know that not everyone's gonna say yes to everything you offer them. There's just so much out there these days. It's hard to always be the, you know, the club or the district in front of that stuff. So I feel like this chat has been blowing up with probably some suggestions yes. too. There were yeah. several good suggestions in there and something that we do even on Facebook we can say, you know, we did this walk today for local, whatever, for the local community, but Rotary is an international organization of professional men and women that are eradicating polio or whatever. You know, you can add that sentence as a teaser. You can duplicate things and maybe you can sneak another project in when you're doing a local project. And then Dawn said, create your own video, post on social media channels, how about a blog and sharing with partners that you work with on grants so that they can post? And she's a big LinkedIn proponent. So yeah, you know, me too. You know, just a little saying. bit of just a little bit of feedback. My the median age of my club is about sixty eight. So then thirty percent of them have social media accounts. They don't even know what that word means. Uh, so if they don't see it in the paper, despite their generosity. I, you know, I feel ineffective in my duties and that that's crushing. So if I could, if I can make a suggestion, I think we probably have some experts on the call that actually have worked in print journalism. Um, I know one who, who is in my own home community, um, Elliot Potter, um, who is a longtime journalist, former editor, and very much still in the print market. Um, but of what exists. So I would I would offer someone who who has worked in this. What would you suggest, Elliot? Well, I, I think that Renee Laws also made an excellent point, which is, you know, you've got to start if you're going to work with the local paper, uh, then you got to start with the local angle of the local people and then extend to the international project. You can't go uh, for the international project first and then work to the local. You have to sort of reverse that. I thought Renee I uh, had a lot of suggestions about how fundraising, community partnerships, I think is one thing that uh, was brought up. And uh, I thought all of that was a good, a good way to uh, get this and make this happen. So, and then the other thing was the, the per, whoever suggested about making sure you do have the right platform. 
you know, that's the, that's, that, those are both great suggestions. So, but to start with the local angle, that's what the newspaper is going to go with. And, and a suggestion I might offer is invite the print media to come to your meeting and be a speaker. And they idea. can learn, they can learn a little bit more about your club, but I, I would kind of, I would kind of temper your members not to beat them up while they're there. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah, I've done that a couple of times, but you, you know, um, you know, tenacity is, is important. So I'll keep asking. <laughs> Ken, Ken, I did that uh, several times when I was uh, an editor and I tell you, it does soften you up. Yeah. <laughs> Now, we have one question, and I'm not sure it's from RS. I guess that's Randy Smith, and he, I'm hoping it's tongue in cheek. He asked if there was a new logo. Where are you, Randy? I, I'm talking about the logo that came out about 10 years ago. I think there's probably a lot of compute. I think, I don't know if Ashley can share her screen, but I, I think because they are still being sold. Um, I think it can sort of add to confusion from what if we Google and we see Rotary or if we see it on Russell Hampton, it I think might be um, it might be newsworthy uh, to share on the screen what the current logo of Rotary International looks like. Okay. So, yeah, Don, I think that's a really good point. So the, I, I know that a lot of times it can be really hard to have to recreate so that it's, it's very easy to Google, right? And just to Google Rotary. Um, this is actually better than it was for a really long time. Um, for a really long time, you wouldn't see any of these basically solid color mark of excellence as you would see a lot of these dual colors. So it is getting better if you just Google Rotary. Um, I wonder what happens if you Google Rotary logo. Meh. Not, uh, there's still quite a few. Um, so, when you go into Brand Center, um, there are a lot of different versions you can do. But we can tonight. I'll just make sure everyone is good on the basics. So, um, this one up here that I'm kind of hopefully you can see my mouse moving. This is the Master Brand logo. Um, it has Rotary. It has the Mark of Excellence. And if you ping pong two over to this one, this is what we call the Simplified. This is kind of like the main logo that everyone should be using. The Simplified is used for very small things when the detail can't be done um, with the regular Mark of Excellence. But this is what we're looking for. What we find a lot of people still have, if you ping over here, is this dual toned uh, mark of excellence or the rotary wheel um, that is gone and has been gone for to Billy's point about eight and nine years but it just tends to keep coming and coming so make sure when you're using stuff that if you're using anything with the mark of excellence in it and it's not a solid color so it comes in blue it comes in black it comes in white it comes in this gold color um, and of course sometimes the logo is all white like there's a lot of different iterations but if your wheel is anything your mark of excellence is anything other than one color then it's outdated, okay? So I really encourage you to go into the Brand Center. It's a lot easier now to download those, um, those out of it. And as you can see, there's so much of the Imagine Rotary already on here. Um, and it's a hot topic in Rotary, but it is meant to be an internal thing. So just be careful how you're using it, even though it's popping up. So I stick to this one in the top left, um, it's your main one. And then from there, you just have some small variations to make your designs work. Other questions? I'm going to ask if we can add one, 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 one question. Um, as far as like the Imagine, which is our new one and um, serve to change lives, which one should we be using? Imagine. Imagine. Serve to change lives is gone. Okay, and, and we can use that. We have the appropriate logo for our club, but. And that's internal only. I, I've got that. Okay. But um, the larger picture. Okay. I just want to double check. And on the call tonight, we've got Sue Pa. Sue, will you wave? And Sue, weren't you the original RPIC? She's not fast enough. Yes, yes. I, I just, I was trying to get my uh, oh. microphone on. Yes, I was the original RPIC. 
So years ago, it was just foundation and uh, they added membership and public image. I think uh, right around the time I was starting in the governor's line and Sue trained me. So thank you, Sue. I appreciate it. I think, I think this, this logo that we're talking about was introduced uh, the one of the years, I think my first year is our pick or maybe the year before. So it is not new to keep no. calling new is incorrect. Uh, well, it is new apparently to a lot of people. So you are well, correct. It is not new. Unfortunately, when you Google, like you, it was just shown on the screen, you, you still see old logos because they're still out there. So that's why it is is, is completely correct. You should go to Brand Center to download any logo that you want because those will be correct and current. And Randy, you were saying it. it what about the new logo? It is not what you have behind you. Oh. Yeah. It's what Sue has behind her and what Ken and Ross Sloan and Dawn, all of them. I'm sitting on my back porch because my basement is too hot. So. And one of the things, can you talk a little bit about if, because since the logo is a hot topic, because um, the only one, the only entity that can use the rotary wheel, the gold wheel, there's even some requirements around that. Can you talk about that, Billy? No, I didn't think you could, anybody could use the gold wheel anymore, except for our pins. If you have an old pin, you can wear your old pin. Right. And so just about, because. Sometimes somebody people want to use, just use that. Yeah. Somebody just asked, what is our pick? I apologize. I try not to use um, initials. Our pick is Rotary Public Image Coordinator. And that's who the people that are giving this tonight, that's who they are. So, um, but Rotary calls us our picks. Any other you know, questions? I was just going to um, bring up. So we're um, almost a month into our Rotary year, and some of these roles we're holding are new for some of us, and some of us are kind of old veterans. So, is there anything that you found in your first month to be really helpful or challenging um, that we can talk through tonight? Because typically, if someone is experiencing it, that means someone else on this call is probably experiencing it. Um, so we're happy to kind of make this a Q&A here about any topics. I don't feel like it has to be related to just what we presented on tonight. And while we're waiting, Rachel, <clears throat> Raquel asked, what's the official place to order Rotary merchandise? If you go to shop in Rotary, they will list all the places that are official. But it is quite a process to go through in order to be um, a certified person. We have one in Asheville and she's talked about how many times she sent her logos in stitched and things like that. And so it's not the meek of heart. Um, and it is extensive. So please use somebody who is certified. Um, and I would say that Russell Hampton is one. The only bad thing with Russell Hampton is they don't get rid of old stuff as quickly as I'd like them to. Um, they were still selling t-shirts with the six areas of focus on it. And their comment was, we're in business, you know, we want to get rid of those shirts. But um, they've got a, they do a good um, job. Somebody said five-star awards um, for engraving and licensing. So there's another. Oh, and Ashley just posted in the chat the place to go. So there's a link in there. So any questions, as Ashley said, about things that you were surprised about or help that you need starting out? I, I, uh, I'm I, fairly new to this. Um, I'm in 7750, hi Sue. And uh, I wasn't aware until tonight that we weren't supposed to use the annual theme imagined uh, externally. So that was very helpful to me. But is that true generally of every annual theme that that's more of an internal uh, thing? And, and, and what replaces that for external? The, the master brand. 
and the link up with your club name and the master brand or your district name and the master brand. That being the wheel. Yes, the wheel with the name. Right. Candace, the biggest reason for that, just to give a little bit um, of context, is just from a brand management standpoint, when Rotary, who already, again, can't seem to quite get its brand under control with a logo that was changed nine years ago, we're also adding in a new logo every year, right? And so if you were like, what is Rotary? Well, it's, you know, imagine Rotary, it's this, it's that. And like every year it's this new phrase. Um, it can be very overwhelming um, for the public to understand when they see us, what are we doing? And so that's why I always encourage our folks when you're you know, trying to rally your, your team members in your club when you're trying to, you know, garner excitement internally about Rotary, use that because it kind of gives people a charge for the year, but externally. So if you're buying t-shirts or again, you're getting signage made or again, all that kind of stuff that you're going to be using year after year out in the community, we want everyone to see Rotary with the mark of excellence whether it's a hat or a shirt or a pin or a sign in your community or whatever it may be, because then every time they see it, you know, repetition is good in brands, brand building and culture building. They'll understand what it is when they go from community, community to community. But if they see Imagine Rotary in this community, then they see the mark of excellence over here. They're like, wait, what happened to Rotary? It just, it can get really, really overwhelming um, from a brand management standpoint. That's why we kind of use it as an internal rallying call um, but try to stick everything publicly to the master brand Rotary with the mark of excellence. Yeah, and, and Ashley, to the, your point is, is that each year that theme that comes out is the, the theme is developed by the Rotary International President. And so that's the focus for their year. So this year for Jennifer, it's Imagine Rotary. And And someone said that Russell Hampton still has the old um, street sign you know, that you put up in the outside of your town. Um, I did order my street sign from Russell Hampton. It's the new logo. So you might have to search around or give a call to their number and say, that's an old logo. And I give them a hard time and tell them that's an old logo. I want the new logo. So, I mean, they're not going to do it until we pressure them. So politely. And to Raquel, your question about the elevator pitch, Joe, you might be able to put your fingers on it more quickly than I can. Um, we do have kind of like a, a little infographic, if you will, of how to build your elevator pitch. So I, we don't like people to like have a script and then just like insert certain words. We do have like a framework that might be helpful for you. So let me see if Joe or I can find that for you quickly and we'll pop it in the chat here. Do you want the uh, tell your story infographic? That's what you're looking for? Yeah, the one we did at the beginning of last year. To I'll start digging, keep rolling. Okay. And most of these tools that we're talking about are at our website. So you go to RI Zones, uh, no, RI Zones 3334, and then forward slash PI. Is that correct, Ashley? Uh, forward slash Z33PI. So it stands for zone 33 public image. And on there, there is a toolbox with many of the things that we've talked about with all the presentations from April, um, logos, you name it, they're in there. So uh, take time to look at that. With, with with regards to not using Russell Hampton. Who's talking? Elijah Beatty from Lake Norman Rotary. Um, would you please re uh, repeat that, that link again for me, please? Ashley, do you have it right at your fingertips? I'm typing it right now. So if you okay. just, yep. Are you putting it in the chat? Yep. So hopefully everyone can see that and make sure I typed it right. If you can't see the chat, um, hover your mouse over the bottom and click on the chat and it will bring up, there it is, RI Zones with an S, 33-34.org forward slash Z33PI. 
And from there, you can get to videos and the toolbox and all of our classes that we've done so far. Okay, well, we have hit 6.45 and gone past it. Um, we typically try to do 45 minutes so we don't take up too much more of your time. Ashley, if we get that um, storytelling, we can send that with, um, with several things that your uh, district grant item, the all-star and the recording of our um, webinar tonight. We'll put all that together. Yeah, Thank and just so, so you guys are aware, just to make one final plug, um, we ha we do these sessions um, consistently throughout the year. So if you don't already have this stuff on your calendar, hopefully you got it um, from one of us or we'll be shortly if you didn't. But again, our next one will be August 23rd and that's just open office hours. So it's typically a smaller group, but we just come in and um, ask any question that's on your mind. So if you're struggling with something, you wanna talk best practices about something, any topic is on the table. Um, and then we are taking the month of September off because uh, a lot of us will be at the Zone um, Impact Summit that's happening in Baltimore. So just everyone make sure you have August 23rd on your calendar. Um, and this full schedule is available at that website that we just shared. Um. And somebody was asking a question that I was saying, if you don't have the contact for those documents. Okay, so we actually do have all of your contact information. Um, and I, Joe, will you help me get this chat so I'll know who is here? Thank you. Okay, we'll see you next week for office hours. And remember, it doesn't have to be a problem. You can say, wow, we just did this great successful run. And let me tell you how we did it and how we think we were successful. So we like to hear those because oftentimes we learn from other people's successes and failures. So go ahead and, and bring them on next week. Thanks so much. And thank you, Ken. See you later. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night.